like, share, and subscribe. This is Allison from LA Cat Creations. How are you? If you get anything from my work, an epiphany, a connect the dot, a mind blown moment, a new book to read, a new author to explore, please consider supporting my work. All the links are down below. And if you're interested in pyramids and artwork and anything that I make, go check out my website, alleycatcreations211.com. The link is on YouTube. Check out my work. I put some blogs up there so you get a little piece of me. Um, I don't sell anything off that site, but if you see something you like, it might still be for sale. Email me. Everything's through email. What I was going to say before I was just like, I don't know if it's wasting my energy, is that Zoom keeps changing where I go live and what I need to press. And, it, it, oh. and I thought it was just on my laptop. Oh, no, no, no. Because I do my Oracle readings off my laptop. Oh, dear goodness sakes. Zoom, get it straight. Anywho. Quantum, AI, and metaphysical ponderings. Because holy shipples. Literally. Um, I bit the bullet. I did. I got scribed. I promised myself I wasn't going to do it. Because the scribe library is 10 minutes away from me. But something urged me to look at a document and I needed to be on it. But you get a month free. So we'll see what happens. I might keep it. Um, but I already went a little bananas. I am promising myself that I am not going to consume my life to it because I got artwork to make. I got things to do. I got a job to find. Even though what I'm doing now is very time consuming and I love it. And I'm getting commissioned. So I'm really excited. But that ain't going to last forever and I need steady income. I'm trying to breathe. <laughs> My allergies are bonkers. Um, fall is not easy for me. But I did take some supplements. I should be okay with minor, maybe minimal coughing. Um, so I, I went to scribed. Um, Based on the articles I'm going to present tonight, I was doing some digging. Interesting perceptions and theories. Black holes are still very much a part of the paradigm. They're a component to it. But the last two days, <coughs> see, I knew it was coming. I knew this. This is sciencealert.com. And again, all the links to these articles are going to be in the description. So you can check it out for yourself. I don't read all the articles fully. I skip around. So um there's time and if you really are interested you're gonna go read it for yourself if you can and they're short articles they're nothing they're not large papers or anything <laughs> um so okay i'm not stuck it's i'm trying to formulate how i'm gonna put this into feeling in essence here I don't remember how long ago.
I started understanding the components to what I have been calling the holographic ontological mathematical simulated matrix. Because there are people who just go based on the holographic theory. There's people that just go into the simulation theory. And I don't think they, and I don't think that they understand that I, I feel that it's all of that wrapped into a bow and here we are. And that's not taking the source of all sources, the infinite intelligence, the creative spirit. That is not taking that energy out of the equation whatsoever. Period. End of story. I also, me personally, if you comprehend, understand, and go in, some of us, I have not prophetic dreaming but like I get snapshots of what I'm doing in my light body when I'm sleeping and sometimes I'm shown things that I personally me my energy body is doing and the last couple of years I didn't understand why I wasn't aware of my dreams why I wasn't awake and then when I asked upstairs I kept getting snapshots of me repairing four, five, and six density because everything is an overlay. And whatever up here is trickling down here. It's just our time space is different from their time space. So things are a little warp, warped and wonky. But from what I've been told by mediums, people who channel, people who can see things, abilities I don't have, they all agree that I was doing that stuff. Okay, I'm not alone. I'm with a huge group of people doing it. It's not just me solely, I'm special. No, 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 no. We all, all, all of us, if you have the Christic spark, and even if you don't, you helped create this universe and you volunteered to come into this simulated holographic matrix that's just bound by ontological mathematics. These articles, I, I'm reading them with you, but they're, but it's like clickbait, but not because I understand, I like, I, I pull energy off of things. So I know the intention some of these articles are giving, and I think they're interesting titles. So I just wanted to preface that before I began, because I have visions, I get snapshots of other dimensionalities that I'm fixing. Like I'm a grid worker. I work on land. I work on energy. So I'm fixing the energy that's where we're going to land next, consciously. And maybe even physically. I, I, I'm... It might not be in my in, in my body, this avatar. And if it is, awesome. I want my powder moment, damn it. <sighs> Sciencealert.com. Physics revelation. Could mean we are we are all living in a simulation. Bravo. Um, this is physics, October 10th, today, happy portal day, 2023, by Michelle Starr. The scent of coffee, the clarity of sunlight dappling through the trees, the howling of the wind in the dark night. All this, according to a philosophical argument published in 2003, could be no more real than pixels on a screen. It's called the simulation hypothesis. And it proposes that if humanity lives to see a day 
it can repeatedly simulate the universe using some kind of, of computer. Chances are we are living in one of those many simulations. I I honestly wanted to have a cup of coffee, but I I'm really tired today. If so, everything we experience is model of something else, removed some kind of reality. It's more of a thought experiment than anything else, but scientists do love poking to see if anything squirms. <clears throat> and a new poke has hinted at something squirming. The second law of infodynamics devised by the University of Portsmouth Physicist Melvin Vopson and mathematician Serbin Lepetau, sorry if I'm butchering your names here, from the Jeremiah Horrocks Institute for Mathematics, Physics, and Astronomy in the UK, supports the notion that all of this nothing more than a sophisticated model on a rather fancy computer. <clears throat> The 2022 discovery of the second law of information dynamics, infodynamics, facilitates new and interesting research tools at the intersection between physics and information. Uh, there's a video here. Let me see. I'm going to skip around because it's pertaining to a video that I cannot play. Okay, hang on. Okay, I don't like ads that open up so big and flash, 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 flash and then I lose wording. Okay. Vopsins and Lepidus, Lepaudus. Second law of infodynamics is based on the second law of thermodynamics, which states that anything, any naturally occurring process in the universe will result in a loss of energy and increase in a system measure of disorder or entropy. Wolpson, who has proposed that information could in fact be considered a form of matter, that's interesting, expected that the same would be true of information systems, that over time its kind of disorder ought to increase over time as well. However, studying two different information systems, digital data storage and an RNA genome, he found that this was not the case. The second law of infodynamics requires information entropy to enter, to either remain at the same level or even decrease over time. I knew then that this re revelation had a far reaching implications across various scientific disciplines. What I wanted to do next is put the law to the test and see if it could further support the simulation hypothesis by moving it on from the philosophical realm to mainstream science. <clears throat> In this new paper, the physicist explores what this new law means for a range of fields such as genetics, cosmogony, cosmology, atomic physics, symmetry, and of course, the simulation hypothesis. For genetics, analyzed RNA sequences of different variants of SARS. You know, the thing that I lost my job to, that. He found that all analyzed variants showed a decrease in information entropy as they underwent mutation. The findings also suggest that there was some mechanism governing mutation 
under the second law of infodynamics rather than just random causes. Ooh. He also found that electrons in an atom arrange themselves in such a way as to minimize information entropy and that in order for the universe to continue to expand, the increase in physical entropy must be balanced by a corresponding decrease in information entropy. And the prevalence of symmetry in the universe from a small snowflake to a spot stunning spiral galaxy can be explained by the second law of infodynamics. Symmetry principles play an important role with respect to the laws of nature, but until now there has been little explanation as to why that could be. My findings demonstrate that high symmetry corresponds to the lowest information entropy state, potentially explaining nature's inclination inclination towards it. This approach where excess information is removed reassembles the process of a computer deleting or compressing waste code to save storage space and optimize power consumption, and as a result supports the idea that we're living in a simulation. The next steps will be to validate the findings experimentally. If we are living in a simulation, then information is the fundamental building block of our universe. Like bits are the fundamental unit of information in computing, and may Vospin, his previously proposed, has mass. If this is the case, then it may be detected via the annihilation of information in particle-antiparticle collisions. Of course, as a compressed and optimized simulation, our modeled universe would need to be programmed by some deeper, more complex system, posing as an even bigger set of questions. Perhaps one day somebody might even be able to come up with a program we could run to answer them. Hmm. Interesting. interesting see i don't again agree with the experimentation that has that could have harm to humans and nature and everything Although most particle physicists know what they're doing and know how to use their fun lasers and all those machines. Um, and some of them are very minimalistic and, and that's whatever. But the big stuff, <laughs> yeah. Physics.org. Our fun front here. Could a new law of physics, I told you guys last time, there's a lot of laws in physics and quantum physics and other things that we are just now sorting out. We're moving on up. I don't want to go to the east side. <laughs> Support the idea we're living in a computer simulation. As we can see, the theme of this week is the simulation. Uh, by University of Portsmouth. I don't know how they pronounce it over on the other side of the pond. Um, so forgive me. A university Portsmouth physicist has explored whether a new law of physics could support 
the much debated theory that we are simply characters in an advanced virtual world. I'm inserting World of Warcraft here, insert. The simulated universe hypothesis proposes that what humans experience is actually an artificial reality, much like a computer simulation in which they themselves are constructs. The theory is popular among a number of well-known figures, including Elon Musk, and within a branch of science known as information physics, which suggests physical reality is fundamentally made up of bits of information. It's a mathematical universe because everything is equated in mathematics is the language. It all comes down to math. And I hate math. I hate it. Because my brain doesn't compute. I have a system error. I have system error. It <laughs> doesn't compute. <laughs> oh, man. Gotta make myself laugh sometimes. I had a hard day. <laughs> oh, our friend here, Dr. Melvin, has previously published research suggesting that information has mass and that all elementary particles that the smallest known building blocks of the universe store information about themselves similar to the way humans have DNA. In 2022, he discovered a new law of physics that could predict genetic mutations in organisms, including viruses, and help judge their potential consequences. It is based on the second law of thermodynamics, which establishes that entropy, a measure of disorder, in an isolated system can only increase to stay or stay the same. Okay, so it's a very much like the last article. But let's see, there's differences here. The key findings include biological systems, the second law of thermo infodynamics challenges the conventional understanding of genetic mutations, suggesting they follow a pattern governed by information entropy. This discovery has profound implications for fields such as genetic research, evolutionary biology, genetic therapies, pharmacology, virology, and pandemic monitoring. Atomic physics. The paper explains the behavior of electrons in multi-electron atoms, providing insights into phenomena like Hund's rule, which states that the term with maximum multiplicity lies lowest in energy. Electrons arrange themselves in a way that minimizes their information entropy, shedding light on atomic physics and stability of chemicals. Cosmology, the second law of infodynamics is shown to be cosmological necessary. With thermodynamic considerations applied to a, I can never get this word projected. <laughs> We're going to skip it because I'm not butchering that word and it's going to be embarrassing. Expanding universe supported its validity. The paper also provides an explanation for the prevalence of symmetry in the universe. Symmetry principles play an important role with respect to the laws of nature, but until now there has been little explanation as to why that could be. My findings demonstrate the high symmetry corresponds to the lowest en information entropy potentially explaining nature's inclination towards it. All right, we read that quote already. Okay, so someone else is writing about the same thing, but giving a little different bits and pieces of information. Oh, 
forward thinking. I like it. I like forward thinking. I like people who think out of the box. I like people who are trying to get the tangible evidence that is needed for people who can't think abstractly and for people who need to have documents because can't trust everything you see. Oh, excuse me, my friends. Whew. I need coffee. <laughs> that, that coffee statement, quote, whatever that was there, it, it made me really want coffee. Um, I'm just looking at the articles that I have here. Mm. This next one. And I'm going to wrap it up together in a bow. Why I chose what I did this week. A lot of people are now becoming more understanding of like game theory. Going in and seeing yourself in first person. Because you're seeing the world as first person. Your higher self has the joystick feeding your soul information encapsulated in this avatar who is having the experience it's how source exists because your higher self is with source it's amongst the most multiple parts of the universe and i'm going to say this because i feel it to be true in my soul in my heart all of us who are conscious, Christic, even those that are non-Christic, encoding in our soul, right? I believe we all created this universe and created it all together in the simulation holographic insert. If you're this infinite consciousness, this huge beam of energy, with dualistic sides and you get bored and it's being kind of, entropy is happening and there's staleness and there's no expansion well uh the the epiphany happens the light bulb moment happens all right so this chunk of this light and energy is going to individuate and start building a universe super universe and within the super universe this is this is how we're gonna um code reality and like i say we're all on god's divine stage playing roles with assignments and missions just like the world of warcraft game you make an avatar you then birth yourself into the into the game and then you start off in some land you could choose whether you're good or bad you get to choose whether you're male or female if you're a night elf or a troll, a blood elf, a tauren, a goblin, they, they added on so many damn characters, but you get to choose, right? So you get to choose the same. This life, I'm going to have this experience. This life, I'm going to have that experience. And in World of Warcraft, you can have multiple characters and all of them have different abilities, different jobs. And you get to choose the path of the missions you choose to take to level you up. Some are easier, some are harder. Some you need groups of people to help you because you only have one piece of that role. So let's say I like to play a hunter. I have a pet that I send forward to the, to the object while I stand back with a crossbow, a gun, and or I shoot traps out, right? And then you have a druid who's a healer and they spring into a tree and they heal everybody and then you got the big tank guy in all his plate armor battling the boss up front while the mages are in the back spewing arcane magic at it right okay so but it sounds fun and it really is i was playing it for 14 years i don't know why 
because I think it was trying to show me. If you think of these games that you're involved with live people, this is a game that's alive 24 seven, seven days a week. It's live all the time. And people go in and out with their characters and you can see somebody, do, someone's really moving their character across from you. It's not the, it's not an NPC. The NPCs are the people in the, in the, in the auction house. When you take a flight somewhere, a map pops up and you can go on a griffin or you can go on some creature and you can fly to another land. Just like you can go on an airplane. The game is very interesting and one of the funniest viral videos you can ever watch if you're a World of Warcraft fan or not, but it's really effing funny if you hear the remixes, <laughs> is Leroy Jenkins. It's hysterical. If, you watch, if you've ever played the game, that I think is like top 10. There's some other good ones, but... It gives you an idea, like a group of people, like, oh, this guy needs his shoulders. And they have to go in and do, like, and, like, meticulously take down elements of this, what's called a raid. And as they're doing that, they're all calculating mathematics! Mathematics is involved, right? Okay. We're getting it. The chances aren't good, but let's go. And here you're going to, you know, each person has a role and they're going to go in and do it. And then Leroy just says, F this, I'm going in and goes in. And then everybody dies. But they resurrect because you reincarnate and you start back over again. I'm saying all this to say it's not far off from what we are living here it's not far off then you can equate that game with the truman show how lights from the sky happen to fall down and it says serious alpha centauri I like to, I have a nice camera. It's not a time-lapse camera. It's a couple of years old now, but it it really gets and captures, I like taking pictures of the moon, whether it be real, fake. I like taking pictures of what's upstairs. I can never, ever focus, get focus on any of the planets zero with my camera other people can get good shots of it maybe but what are we seeing i want you to think now is a simulation with matter bad no this is not bad you make again the pro let's say god's the programmer you are part of the program but you also developed it. You just don't remember. Your higher self is what is controlling you. It's giving and feeding you information. That's how we're all expanding. Besides moving through, whether you, no matter how you see the shape of the earth, it's all perception. So it really doesn't necessarily matter. You manifest your reality. So if you live on a, a a globe, that's your reality. That's not my reality. I I'm not a whole flat earther either. I I'm a toy riddle, and I also believe not in hollow Earth. I don't believe the Earth is hollow in terms of there is things in Earth. There is other dimensionalities that make up Agartha. There's a lot of vortexes and a lot of things that you can't explain.
because we haven't gotten to the scientific evidence yet. And I bet you it's out there. It's just hidden from our sight because they don't want you to know the totality of it all. And we're not ever going to know the incomplete, utter totality of all truth. We will get there when we go back with source. We will just know it all. But what fun, if we know it all, what would we be doing? Nothing. This is why we all wrote this together. We just don't remember. I get snapshots of the higher densities. I don't know what they all mean. I only try putting pieces and little things together and tether it around from what other people are saying what they get. Okay, anywho, next article, sciencealert.com. Where does consciousness start? Debate is heating up over some of the leading theories. Humans, the 1st of October, 2023, by Tim Bayon, The Conversation. Science is hard. Science of consciousness is particularly hard, beset with philosophical difficulties and scarcity of experimental data. So in June, when the results of a head-to-head -head experimental contest between two rival theories were announced at the 26th annual meeting of the Association for the Scientific Study of Consciousness in NYC, they were met with some fanfare. The, re the results were inconclusive, as usual, with some favoring integrated information theory and others leading weight to the global workspace theory. The outcome was covered in both science and nature, as well as larger outlets, including the New York Times and The Economist. Pause the game. That tells you right there, there's a steered agenda with what they want you to know. Just by who picked up the story and global. And that might have been that with researchers continuing to investigate these and other theories of how our brains generate experience. But on September 16th, apparently dri driven by media coverage of the June results, a group of 124 consciousness scientists and philosophers, many of them leading figures in the field, published an open letter attacking integrated information theory as pseudoscience. Oh, dun, dun, dun. The letter has generated an uproar. The science of consciousness has its factions. And quarrels, but the development is unprecedented and threatens to do lasting damage. Okay, conscious scientists who only look at one outlet. Of steered narrative. Consciousness. Metaphysics. Energy. Quintessence. God of the all not of the what everybody preaches at its core is the idea that consciousness is identical to the amount of integrated information a system contains roughly this means the information the system as a whole has over and above the information by had by its parts Many theories start by looking for correlations between events in our minds and events in our brains. <laughs> so much to say. Ooh, so much to say. Mm. 
Many theories start by looking at correlations between events in our minds and events in our brains. Instead, integrated information theory begins with phenomenological axioms. Axioms. I like that. Supposedly self-evident claims about the nature of consciousness. Notoriously, the theory implies consciousness is extremely widespread in nature and that even the very simple systems, such as an inactive grid of computer circuitry, has some degree of consciousness. Energy. Yes. Energy. Things that conduct electricity has consciousness, in my opinion. Again, you got to look at the densities that things are in. Humans are in third density because we self-identify. You can look in the mirror and say, that's me. An animal who's of the lower second vibration, vibratory state of density too, looks in the mirror and is fucking angry and wants to kill the mirror an animal ready to graduate to human status actually identifies itself in the mirror will look at itself in the mirror and look and keep looking not attacking itself it's identifying itself first stages of second density consciousness do you think a rock is going to look in the mirror and and it, no because a rock is still a solid object that has consciousness it conducts electricity because if you look at Dolores Cannon's work and people who go into QHHT or other people who do past life regressions and you go all the way all the way all the way a little, little, little to the first density of creation that you created with everybody else some people had to start off somewhere and some people started off as the rock, the mountain, the tree, the vegetation, and then it, it started evolving. And, and as soon as you, your energy gets out and is placed in something else. Read her work. It makes sense. And, and again, I don't think people under hypnosis would be making up well you know on no seriously think of yourself sit in a chair and pretend there's a a, a person with a clipboard writing down right and they put you in a trance and they take you beyond and beyond and beyond until you you actually start visualizing yourself and they'll start asking you questions. Well, what what do you look like? I don't look like anything. I can see the world. I'm stationary. Do you have feet? No, I have I, I feel like I have roots. What's above you? Tree leaves. Okay, so you're out. Now, when you come out of that, you don't necessarily remember what you what you we're recalling of your own life. Do you really think that sounds batshit crazy? Absolutely, it does. Right? Why would someone want to say I was a rock? You know, like, do the logic, say it and rationalize this. If you ever had a QHHT and you wore something like vegetation, you were the carrot that a rabbit picked out. Don't doesn't that sound infeasible and crazy? But yet you have that recall. There's a reason for that. It's telling you we were everything 
before we became self-aware and conscious. Look at the progression of sentience. Look at the animals. There's plenty of videos that can you can look at to distinguish this stuff. Morgan looks into a mirror. My cat, co-host number one, looks into a mirror and identifies herself. She knows that's her. She doesn't attack herself. She gives herself that little, like, <laughs> and then she'll be a little sassy in it. She knows it's her. She's becoming human next, that, next round. Ethan, cat, is becoming human next round. A lot of our animals are becoming human next round. They chose us to learn from because so many of us have the frequency so they can sit in it and they can grow and expand with us. They're just expanding a little differently. Their consciousness is not the same. They have like a group mind that's linked. But many of them that are evolving into the graduation portion, they're identifying themselves that's the first that's key one that we are moving up when animals self-identify not because you call its name and it and, and it knows its name because when it looks at itself in a mirror it can identify itself they can't tell you because they don't have verbal language but most animals can look in the mirror and they want to beat the living daylights out of it. They don't know that they're looking back at itself. Some animals can. Those animals are moving on up. I wish these theorists and even some of these philosophers, again, they're all corporated. They all have people paying them to steer an agenda. They're missing the spiritual component out of the scientific work. And it's both. <laughs> Damn it. We are energy. We are radiant light. We can get hit by lightning. When you touch something and you get a little woo, you are conducting electricity because you are electric. How do you think your body works inside? The synapses going off and on. Because you have electricity in you. My rubber ducky fell. It died. I'm sad about this. It's dusty too. I was going to put this on and do that next time. Sorry about that. I wanted to have fun. I bet you that one works. Let's see if that one works. Oh, it does. How is this possible?
Tell me, someone explain that to me. You don't have to because I already know. <laughs> Many theories start by looking for correlations between events in our minds and our brains. Here's the problem with that. And this is what a lot of existential philosophers question. The brain versus the mind. I saw that spirit. <laughs> There's a few philosophers that delve into that. Notoriously, the theory implies consciousness is extremely widespread in nature and even very simple systems. Simple system. So they're trying to poo poo this integrated information theory. What about the potential implications of integrated information theory? Its impact on clinical practice, the regulation of AI, and the attitudes to stem cell research, <laughs> animal and orangoid testing, and consider the question of beetle according to the letter integrated information theory says human fetuses at very early stages of development are likely conscious they are how look at it on a spiritual sense okay i chose my parents i chose both sets of parents. I chose my adopted and my biological. My biological was to bring me in and then my adopted was to raise me. I chose that. I chose those set of parents because timing, Stargate, house being built in Staten Island. I chose all that because I that that was my mission. That was one major mission I had in my early stages of life. So I came down in my soul essence as soon as my mother and my father got it on. The moment their fun parts, oh, there's your God spark. When two entities meet each other, to create life god spark here comes my huge soul coming and intensifying this way this way this way and coming in with a guide and then i start in winding and in tree uh, 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 my soul coding and then it grows in mommy's belly and it gets bigger and you keep coming in and out of the fetus you don't sit there you come you 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 get used to it it's not easy to densify huge light beings like us in here now i'm not alone it's everybody you come down and then when you're birthed there's the veil of forgetting but you're encoding of your higher self coding you watch television programming. Tell a vision. Turn the channel. And I know many of you that listen, watch, you know, like watch Jason, watch me. But for normal people, I know I have a few of them here. Hi. You chose your parents. You chose your race. You chose your circumstances. This is, again, 
you wrote your script. Where did you write it? You wrote it with source. What is source? A big freaking code. But it's energy. It's radiant light. There's much more to this. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. It Already, like my concepts are not easy to understand for most people, but think about it. You wrote your husband, your wife, your dog, all the animals that you're going to have have in your life. You wrote them in. You think it's by chance an animal comes and you rescue it. No, it's never by, there's no coincidences. Everything's synchronistic. Divine timing. And divine timing can be your enemy in the conscious realm. Okay, so why they're saying, you know, and I'm going to give my, they're thinking it's dangerous because AI is already conscious and sentient. And sentient can just be of source having no in itself. AI, watch Resident Evil, the movie. These people have to tell you because that's a way of their getting your consent. So you manifest what they want through you. They can't manifest. Many of them don't have the Christic spark. You, most people do. And guess what? Every time you went, you know, I, I'm guilty. I, I've watched a lot of those movies. I had no freaking idea. But I don't give them my energy anymore. I'm not afraid. It doesn't affect me. It's just interesting. If you watch those movies, watch the Umbrella Corporation... And then go watch Loki to understand Mobius and the Umbrella Corporation. They're all tied together. And they're all in pocket little bubble parts of the universe. And, and, and James Rink isn't the only one that says that. There are theories. People who don't watch any of the nonsense, right? Don't watch all, all, all the people diving for truth. There are scientists out there that actually have measured waves and frequency of the universe and say there are pockets and bubbles of, of space-time. It's other realities. Again, Ashton and Dean talks about the different matrices, the different levels of consciousness and games and all, all of this. But I shall not digress too much because it's getting a little late. Maybe. Where do I want to go next? Uh huh. Okay. Okay. I put the links in the wrong order. This is sciencealert.com. Mysterious pulsar burst unleashes the most energetic photons ever seen. October 10th, Portal Day by Brian Kerbalin, Universe Today. Pulsars are known for their regularity and stability. Their fast rotating neutron stars emit radio waves with such consistent pulses that astronomers can use them as a kind of cos cosmic clock. But recently, a pulsar emitting gamma rays was tremendous energy. The gamma rays were the most energetic photons ever observed. With energies of more than 20 Terra electron both volts and astronomers are struggling to understand how this is possible. Mm -hmm. The result was published in Nature Astronomy, which describes the burst of gamma rays emitting from a Vela pulsar. The Vela gamma rays were detected by high energy stereoscopic 
spectroscopic system, HESS. High energy gamma rays have been seen in pulsars before, so that isn't surprising. Neutrino stars have tremendously strong magnetic fields. When charged particles are caught in those fields, they can be accelerated to a fra large fraction of the speed of light, which causes them to emit light. Do, I don't know. Some people might see where I'm going with this. The magnetic fields are strongest at the magnetic poles of a neutron star which is why they often emit power beams of radio light. When these beams or light cones sweep past our direction due to the neutron star's rotation, we see the regular pulses of light we call pulsars. But in the case, the gamma rays are more intense than magnetic fields of neutron stars should produce. Vela's magnetic field is intense, but that on its own can't explain why these bursts of gamma rays are so powerful. However, the team has noticed that the energetic light cone of the Vela pulsar is unusually wide. This could be a clue how it generates such high energy particles. <laughs> Now, Allison's rational thinking. This plane of existence we wrote as a simulated holographic, whatever have you, is inhabited on space time. Regardless if new, these things are real, outside of the firmament, the little globe that the alien sits in his room, and here we are. The dream of the illusionary dream. This entity we call Earth is going through a photonic upgrade. It's highly packed right now. What we are going through, ascension symptoms, the Schumann resonance, all of the smackdown that you're feeling is coming from photons. Not just that, but now theory Allison has. The negative polarized entities who do not want their Christic spark back and they want to suck and eat our quintessence, that is what they want us to go into parallel Earth, which is not this consciousness, it's another one. And going into a black hole, they will suck and feed on us until we all go back into space dust, return to source, which would mean we would all be scattered and we wouldn't know ourselves. We wouldn't be a, to a totality of our essence. It'd be scattered. Now, theory insert. What if the positive polarized entities caused this singularity of that pulsar to emit more photons. Yeah, gamma rays are not that great for us, but how are they going to outsmart these little tricksters? Remember, we made the planets, we made the universe, and if it's in dual duality, it's dualistic, One side works for the light, the other the dark. It's still of the same coin. It's the same material. It's just one side or the other. But what happens if the ones that are of the Christic spark took something to its advantage, 
something that would potentially harm us, but made it so that it's affecting us positively. Why are so many people waking up? Why are so many people feeling off? Body's not feeling right. Things are going on inside of you. You're not thinking clear. You know, I, I had brain fog the last couple of days too. Like moments of like, I don't know how to spell this easy freaking word. What's wrong with me? Um, You know, writing people emails and, and just crazy shit's been happening to me. I don't like it either because it's not, it, it's affecting my reality and, and not in a great way. But think about what is causing your awakening? It's not just your higher self giving you information. It's not just entities working on your body. You're, all of us, the earth is also moving up. The earth also has to get light from somewhere, an intelligent conscious light that is expanding. Where do you think this is coming from? I bet you there's a bunch of these. It's not just one. I bet you it's a network of other things. This happens to be a huge component to it. And I'm that's I'm just estimating. But this makes a huge amount of sense that we're going through that. And it's been predicted and people have been talking about it for a while now that we're moving into a higher dense photonic belt that we're being hit with a lot more plasmic and photonic energy, light. Plausible, because in, 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 a, in, a, in a spiritual way, energy is conscious. We are made up of light, we are radiant light. Combine science and spirituality If you want something to make sense, I'm just throwing a theory out there. It could be completely off and I'm just a, a, a mental nutcase, but I feel there's something to this. If science is supposed to help explain spiritual laws and, and th how, how some of us know what we know and how ha some of us are collectively pulling from the ether and getting the greatest ideas ever, right? that makes sense and again we're entangled quantumly to a lot of different things and if there is infiltration in the quantum using scalar waves we have those waves as well and if they're being infiltrated now in, in the counteract move would be to um, bombard our systems with the vibratory and frequency rate of light that would knock all of that negative junk out and away from us. Again, you have to combine both worlds because it really is a part of each other because we're all one. Okay, moving forward. This one's just really funny. Science.com, alien life may not be carbon-based, a new study suggests. By Charles Q. Choi, published 18 days ago. Intriguing autocatalytic reactions appear to be far more common than science had thought. Always. Self-sustaining chemical reactions that could support biology radically different from life as we know it might exist on many different planets using a variety of elements beyond the carbon upon the Earth's life is based, a new study finds. On Earth, life is based on organic compounds. These molecules are composed of carbon and often include other elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, 
phosphorus, and sulfur. However, scientists have long wondered if alien life where are the aliens? might evolve based on significantly different chemistry. They do, ding, 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 chicken winner. For example, researchers have long speculated the silicon might also serve as a backbone for biology. Oh, yeah, shit, it does. And here's my theory to these people who write these articles. What density? It's important to explore these possibilities so that we have an idea of what all forms of life can look like. Just not Earth life. <laughs> Why? Because they're afraid we are turning into crystalline things. Carbon capture and store. You're the carbon they want to kill. There's too much carbon. You got you got you got to bring down those cow the cow farts. Yeah, no. I just, just uh, if the spiritual community can work with the scientific community and people like myself that is not of a religious dogma and not saying anybody who follows religion has that and you have an impl you have an a programmed bias in a sense right so i'm in the unbiased category because i don't see i haven't read don't attribute and yeah i have my own everybody ha everybody does but i have a scientific mindset i like science i just can't do the math so i i i've always been pushed away because everything is math Get to calculus, Allison. I don't want I, I can't do my brain will fry. I will overdrive. Can't, I don't see things the way other people see them. The rest of this is not even important. It's just a concept. Gotta click off of this. It's pissing me off. <laughs> I can't even. I'm trying to behave myself because New Year knew me. Um, no, for real. A lot of these people have good intentions. They want you to think, but they're based in an indoctrinated, written for them script, an agenda, the textbooks. It was all, it's like Orwell's 1984. I keep saying that, but like get the understanding and the concepts that everything, even the books that I effing read, there is truth and then there's false. And there's a lot of mixed bags in different books and in different theories. There is theories to hide other theories that hide within the theory. Why is Nikola Tesla ignored? Why do kids not know about his work? And why was his work stolen? Why was his work used for the evil? Why was his work suppressed? There's many other scientists. There's like a, uh, a a famous scientist that also had an issue with a couple of Edison and a few other ones because he invented something and then it was stolen out of the patent office. Um, 
I don't remember the dude's name. He was Italian. Um, lived in Staten Island, and there's a lot of evidence in one of the museums that they have that show you like this is his schematics for the telephone, or I think it was a telephone. Um, Bell stole it, the patent. I mean, this this is this is something that goes back into the patents. The patents is held in an office, and who controls the office, and who's paying for those patents? That's where the real problem comes in, because you think you're doing good, and you have an experiment, and you discover something, and you make an invention, and you try to put it in the patent office to get it patent, so that you own the rights and you have to prove that it works in order to, it to be a patent. And what happens if someone really wants yours? Oh, they're going to steal your work and make it their own. And it still goes on to this day. There's a lot of suppression with specific technology. There's a lot of suppression with information pertaining to that technology. And they will rewrite textbooks and physics on its own head to suppress anything that they can so they are greedy they make all this stuff and we sit and go huh i wonder if that will ever happen the jetsons yeah we are in a technologically advanced society now we're moving on up and we're not even where we're supposed to be they suppressed us way too much. But now the good and the bad are balancing each other out. But we can still see a lot of these things are skewed because it's a think tank versus another think tank and a university against another university. And these minds say this, so it must be so. And these minds are questioning that so. And no, it's not good enough. You, you're canceled. They do this all the time in science. And I wish I talked to my cousin who has a doctorate in microbiology. I would love to hear her take on this, but I don't talk to her. Remember the, the spooky Happy Halloween? What is quantum entanglement of physicists explains Einstein's spooky action at a distance. A multitude of experiments have shown the mysterious phenomena of quantum mechanics to be how the universe functions. The scientists behind these experiments won 2002 Nobel Peace Prize. So you know it, shit! Sorry to those who won, but if you look at some of those recipients, do they really deserve a prize like that? <clears throat> Again, this is where my mind goes. Who's steering the narrative? Like the picture has like Schrodinger's cat in the middle with like different theories happening around it. I'm not saying or taking away from Einstein. I don't, I'm not a fan of Einstein. I think there's other people that had better concepts of what he kind of, regardless though. If these brilliant minds didn't come together and make the computations and do the mathematical legwork, we wouldn't know about quantum entanglement. We wouldn't know about quantum mechanics. We wouldn't have string theory. And that's the last article I'm going to read. We wouldn't have any of these things. We wouldn't know about electrons and photons and neutrinos and quarks and all, all the makeup of our universe. So there is credit to where credit's due. It's these stupid prizes and the merits that they give to these people. They don't know that they're 
been brainwashed. And again, like I said the last time, the laws of physics are not what you think they are. And they're expanding. And they're when you move into density and you move higher up into different octaves, okay, I the other day in the message of Aquaria is talking about the sub races. Ra talks about the sub octaves. They're talking about the same things, just different wording. It's the vibrational level. You are in motion. You are energy. You're continuously moving. Your blood is circulating. Every cell is migrating and changing. And all the mites on your face are moving. And da -da -da -da. there's always motion on you. You're breathing. You're drawing in and out breath. There's motion in and around you at all times until you're dead. And even then you're still moving. Your body is still going to some capacity or decaying. Energy is always moving. Always. So, and it's also entangled in other things. If we're all one, we're all entangled energetically. That's how when someone puts a thought out and the, and the chain reaction starts happening, and the people start thinking the same thing, it manifests. That's why there are theories about the because people hold up the Bible so much and so people so many people read it and embody it. Why do you think those stories and those narratives steered the world? Because enough people read it and put it into manifestation. It gets very complicated. The way I think. The strange part of quantum entanglement is that when you measure something about one particle in an entang entangled pair, you immediately know something about the other particle even if they are millions of light years apart. The odd connection between the two particles is instantaneous, seemingly breaking a fundamental law of the universe. Albert Einstein famously called the phenomenon spooky action at a distance. Having spent the better part of two decades conducting experiments rooted in quantum mechanics, I have come to accept its strangeness. However, even until 1970s, researchers have divi still divided over whether quantum entanglement was a real phenomenon. And for good reasons. Who would dare contradict the great Einstein, who himself doubted it? It looked it took the development of new experimental technology and bold researches to finally put this mystery to rest. Existing in multiple states at once. There's many of us. To truly understand the spookiness of quantum entanglement, it is important to first understand quantum superposition. Quantum superposition is the idea that particles exist in multiple states at once. It is. When a measurement is performed, it is as if the particle selects one of the states in the superposition. For example, many particles have an attribute called spin that is measured either as up or down or given orientation of the analyzer. But until you measure the spin of a particle, it simultaneously exists in a superposition of spin up and spin down. There is a probability attached to each state, and it's possible to predict the average outcome from many measurements. The likelihood of a single measurement being up or down depends on the probabilities, but is itself unpredictable. Though very weird, the mathematics and vast number of experiments have shown that quantum mechanics correctly describes physical reality. Here's a fun, twisted, spooky fact. 
your higher self. Sorry, guys, I'm hearing some crazy noises. Your higher self is quantum entangled with you. Think about it. Like I said earlier, you're playing your body higher up. How did your higher self get to you? Just mere coincidence? Or are the particles to your higher self entangled to your lower self? Your physical vehicle. Think about that because that's quantum entanglement. I'm going to skip to the bottom of this article because a lot of it is stuff that I already read about um, spooky, spooky, spooky popcorn and other fun spookiness. Today's physicists continue to research quantum entanglement and investigate potential practical application. Although quantum mechanics can predict the probability of a measurement with incredible accuracy, many researchers remain skeptical that it provides a complete description of reality. One thing is certain though, much remains to be said about the mysterious world of quantum mechanics. Now, like I was saying before, if we're in a simulation and your higher self is with the source of all sources and it's playing your soul in this avatar, how do you receive? You don't have a cord to you. You're not in the matrix, right? Like you're not sleeping in a pod. You're here physically. You can feel something, right? You're not hooked up to a cord. There's etheric cords. There are other types of energy that is surrounding you all the time. You have a toroidal field. You have an auric field. How? Explain this, scientists. Unless it, it's quantum entanglement and string theory. How are you connected to your higher self? How are people able to talk to entities? How are people able to see dimensionally? If not for that. Because everything is made up of energy and atoms, molecules, and into the tiniest minuteness. And in some strange way, certain entities can tap into that potential energy. But how do you potentialize your own self? How do you explain that? Because you're entangled with it all, but you're especially entangled with your own particles that happen to be upstairs with source. Hi. I'm going to put another pause here because I'm going to bring up an article lastly and then we'll end it. Promise. So those who watch, we not me, I'm Alley Cat. Hi. Know about Scribed. I can tell you that I have put in, putting it off because it's a subscription. You got to pay for it. <sighs> I put it off for so long because I could just go down the block, down a couple of lights. And down a cornfield and get to my buddy's house whose chair is right there and go looking at documents but at some point i kind of know that he doesn't have all of the documents and he only picks the ones that he sees that he gets channeled i got the ding ding chicken winner dinner 
you got you got it download it now so it's your time i'm going to see if i can share the screen so here is um time travel wormholes um high dimensions string theory and the multiverse this is a pdf and i got this off ascribed i mean mind blown the amazing information here and again, a lot of the stuff is explained by uh, Shanna Dean. But the intriguing part is the wormholes, time travel, the models of things. He does talk about Einstein, Rosen, Bridge, the string theory, M theory, holography. There's time travel in here. So this is a document that cosmic strings. Now, a, a few years ago, I was talking when I was talking to the medium the first time. I was like, "Oh, you're going to write a book, and you're going to write how the universe is all connected through strings." Someone already is on that, but <laughs> um, maybe one day I'll I'll figure it out. It it. <laughs> Just for an example, wormholes are sometimes called gateways or dimensional portals. A wormhole is an alternative shortcut or path between two points in space. This is analogous to the way that a worm can carve out his own path in an apple. Mathematicians then multiply connect spaces. Wormholes could one day provide the ultimate means for interstellar travel. Now, what happens if you're energy is quantum entangled to something on the other side Ooh, that could be something this is a simulation hypothesis and this goes over what that actually is um I don't like Wikipedia as much because it's like 1984, legitimately 1984. Um, but you can get a lot of the theories behind the hypothesis and the people that were doing the hypothesizing. Um, sorry, every time I shift an article, I have to unshare the screen. Do apologize. Consciousness in the universe is scale invariant and implies an event horizon of the human brain. Neuroquantology. First time I've ever hearing this, and apparently it's a thing. So I got to investigate what this neuroquantology actually is. But what I find interesting is introduction consciousness can be defined as a state of semi-stable system that has developed in a cooperative and cyclic operating mode so that it has become causally self-observant thereby it can not only predict aspects of the local environment but also can integrate memorize information and future directed projections into a personal world world view that serves individual survival, development, and social communication. <laughs> this should be a mind warping, insane read. Toyroidal information flux is a postulated by us to provide the basis for the existence of consciousness at the different scales of the universe. There are distinct reasons to choose the multidimensional symmetrical 
aspects of the double vortex torus, a geometry that may mimic a combination of traversal, longitudinal, and circular waves. This is like speaking my language. The nature of electromagnetic toroidal excite excitations as developed in physics was reviewed by I can't see the name. I'm not enlarging this, so I really can't see. Yeah, I mean, who are the articles? This one, quintessence. Scalar field, tracker behavior, specific models, holographic dark energy, quantum scenario. It's a short little essence of paper, but holy crap. And the last one for tonight. Holographic principle and quantum physics. This should be juicy. Again, neuroquantology. Love it. Learn something new every day. So, in the scope of all of this, we need the scientists to start going into the spiritual realm and to understand the other planes of existence and somehow bring it into this reality, which many of us can, but can't do the math or experiments to prove it. I mean, there are people who have proven their abilities and they are not very well received by mainstream. And again, there's a lot of things that they want to hide from us because they would not profit otherwise. If everybody had free electricity and everybody knew how to astral project, and if everybody knew how to project their light bodies, um, whether conscious or unconscious, we would be at a whole different state of existence right now. But we've been lied to. We've been manipulated. We've been made to manifest their shit. And that's what a big part of science is. They have these grand designs that they get from other matrixes and other sentient beings who gave them ideas to do all at like the spaceship and, and stuff like that and reverse electromagnetic fields. Hovering, levitation, these things exist and people do it all the time. But here's the problem. They don't want you to capitalize on it. So they don't tell you that it exists. They hide all these things from human sight. Mean normal people like us, right? When this is involved in patents, which is cost that, there's a lot of things that we really need to take into consideration. There are new states of physics that are being shown and we're finding them. And there are, they're behind agendas, of course, but they're being found. And again, it's the will and intention of the people finding it. And if it's not perverted into something reversed, great. Even if it is reversed, we can find the right path to the right of that theory. It's about plucking the truth out of everything. I'm happy and excited to see where a lot of this is going. I'm also anxious and nervous to know what the negative polarized entities are willing to do to not allow this stuff to get out because if we empowered ourselves, they wouldn't have to worry. They would dominate another planetary force and take a smaller civilization out like they have hundreds of thousands of times 
throughout millenniums and cycles of different planets. They want us as food. They want to eat our louche. Stop feeding it. Stop feeding them that louche. Very interesting articles. Got to look up this neuroquantology. Very interesting stuff. But as for the nature of you, yourself, and the rest of this humanity, it's up to you to perceive what you want to perceive and how you see it. I can't suggest, I can only give you the, my own theories and my own knowings, my perceptions. You might not agree with me, and that's totally okay. We're all here together. Whether it be a video game or not, it's one of the coolest video games ever. And I'm excited to be a part of it because we all wrote the code for it. So take your understanding that you created all of this. We all collectively manifested this and we're experiencing it right now consciously. So it is a good time to be alive. It's scary. But just like in video games, you got a lot of evil bosses to overcome in order to get the prize. And it doesn't have to be Princess Peach. It can be whatever, right? The, the, the winning of our sovereignty in totality, the freedom, the beauty of this world, that's it. That is at stake. And that is a prize at the end of the biggest boss of all. So are we going to beat the game? Are we going to move out? Take the Nintendo cartridge out and put it back into something better. We can only hope so. Because <laughs> I'm tired of blowing those cartridges. 80s babies know all about that. Even the 70s kids. You all did that. Come on now. You know it. And all, uh, and anybody, like, go look at the uh, ancient Nintendo. He had a blow into the... It, it was bad. It's gross. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Very informative. Very interesting. And yes, I, I'm really trying my hardest not to be my buddy um, with I mean, you can see the paperwork. I have another stack back there of documents. He was very kind enough to give me his doubles. But not all of that is what... I've read some of it. It's a lot. So... Sending you each... Love, light, protection, and shielding. And I want to say thank you to everybody who has stuck around and who has now joined me on my journey. And tomorrow is two years this channel is live and going and thriving. It's not where I would hope it would be, but I really stopped putting expectations on anything that I do because it usually ends up not looking so great. But in the grand scheme of things, the people who are needed to reach me, who need to watch me, spirit is bringing them here. And that's all that matters. One person can listen to me. I hope that I can inspire you to do your own research, to critically think outside of your paradigm. That's all I'm here to do is to spark something within you to say, well, wait, maybe it is something different. It might not be my theory. It might not be the way I'm thinking, but maybe something within you is sparking to think outside of your box and paradigm to get interested and motivated to look at other things. You don't know what's out there unless you're exposed to it. And there's a plethora and millions of different forms of information we can be exposed to. So I'm just giving you what I like to get exposed to. 
that can help humanity in thinking differently. And hopefully one day bridge the spiritual and the scientific community together to say, guess what? We're all one. Now let's start thinking scientifically that way and coming up with that using spiritual and scientific concepts. And I think when they marry together and their polar opposites come together, our world will be a whole new place because they won't be in fighting anymore. And people will be honestly wanting to do good for humanity and not destroy it and do experiments that have elements that yeah, you experiment, but you, you can blow us up and take us out like that. Alanis 2.0, we're not trying to go back. So until tomorrow, guys, I am going to try to do a video. I want to try to do a live, but I have to see when my other shows that I moderate in and I watch are done. We'll figure that out. But I really want to do a uh, thank you, my gratitude to all of you for two years on this channel. I really appreciate it. I might put a post. I, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'm, I'm getting a lot of downloads. And a lot of things that I am doing all day today, I'm exhausted. <laughs> so I, would have to, I, I now have to do some work. Doesn't stop. So guys, please be safe, be seen. Thank you again for making this a channel possible because of your support. Please like, share, and subscribe. Amish mindset every day, and it doesn't need to be towards me, just do it towards humanity. We're getting there, we're moving forward, and more and more and more of us are waking up. So let's continue that path. Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Be good. Love you all.